Hello students, this is a special video to give you some answers for the interim assessment one review. Remember that the interim assessment covers all of the chapters from units uh, one through three. It'll be talking about uh, triangles, um, parallel lines, it'll talk about distance and length, and it'll talk about parallel and perpendicular, it talks about all that, but I don't have a whole lot of time and there's a lot of questions to go over, so here we go. Uh, for question number one, it tells us about a quadrilateral. It actually was pointed out by one of my students that this picture is actually not uh, relevant because negative six comma three is not this. So uh, it, it ignore the picture, but it does tell us that quadrilateral ABCD has these vertices. It asks for the coordinates of the midpoint of the diagonal. Diagonal means it's going not from A to B, that's a side, not from A to D, that's a side, but a diagonal would be from A to C. It actually even tells you it's going to be from diagonal AC. So I'm not worried about point B. I'm not worried about point D. I am worried about points A and C. Uh, I know the midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. This is not a formula that I can download into your memory banks. It's not a formula that I can remember for you. You just got to memorize it. So use the formula, plug it in, et cetera, et cetera, you should get negative two comma five. For number two, a line segment on the coordinate plane has endpoints this and that. The midpoint is this and that. What is the value of y? Here's a method that I use. It's, uh, it's called the jump method. I list out all the points. I list out one endpoint here, one endpoint here, and the midpoint here. If I don't know one of these points, I can figure it out using this jump method. For example, from this endpoint to the midpoint, my x value jumped up by one, which means from this uh, a midpoint value to the x value of the other endpoint, it must also jump up by one. So from negative three to negative two, from negative two to negative one. Look, it works. Then from six to nine, I went up by three. So that means I'm going up by three again from nine to whatever this is, y happens to be equal to 12. You can also solve this using the midpoint formula if you want, I prefer not to. For question three in the diagram, it tells us that uh, segment AB is extended to point D, which means this is exterior angle theorem. This angle plus this angle is equal to this angle. There's no 180s in exterior angle theorem, it's just the two remote interior angles are equal to the exterior angle. This is just an algebra question at this point, so shouldn't be too difficult. Also, this question was from one of the problem sets. For number four, what is an equation of the perpendicular bisector? As soon as you see perpendicular, it means negative reciprocal slope. As soon as you see bisector, it means the midpoint, which is a point on the line, which means you first you find the midpoint, then you find the slope, then you take that slope and turn it into its negative reciprocal. This slope is one half, so it's negative reciprocal is negative two. The y-intercept, well, it turns out that the y-intercept is where it touches the x-axis here. y is equal to zero. If you didn't know that, if you didn't have a graph, you could also have substituted this point, which is zero comma zero, into the equation y equals mx plus b and solved for b. Uh, that was pretty straightforward. Moving on to question number five, it uh, tells you that segment AB has endpoint A at the origin. The origin is zero comma zero. Then line segment AB is longest when the coordinates of B are, well, longest means largest distance, which means I'm gonna use the distance formula four times. It turns out that the longest li uh, line is uh, four comma eight, which is radical 80. On the test, uh, you will be able to plot these points on a uh, on a coordinate grid, so you'll be able to observe which one is the largest distance, or you could use the distance formula, it's up to you. So what I did uh, was I used the distance formula, but again, you could plot this point, zero comma zero, and then plot all four of these points and see which of the lines is longest. This says which equation represents a line that's parallel, which means same slope. If it's got the same slope, that means I gotta solve this equation for y, what a hassle, but that's okay, because you know how to solve. Um, I'm getting the y by itself, and I get y is equal to 4 thirds x plus, doesn't matter, who cares, I'm only looking for the slope. So 4 thirds is my slope here. All of these are different except for this one. This has a slope of 4 thirds. What is the slope of a line that is perpendicular? Well, perpendicular means it's got a negative reciprocal slope. So I solve this for y, and then whatever number I get, I turn it into the opposite, the negative reciprocal. Why? Because I'm looking for a negative reciprocal slope, an nrs, 5 sixth, 5 sixth. All right, question number eight, it's a distance formula question. And again, I can't memorize this distance formula for you, but I can tell you this. It doesn't matter whether this term is x2 minus x1. It doesn't matter whether this term is y2 minus y1. That's right, folks, you can put them in any order because it says plus between them. And plus, addition is commutative. That means you can do it any which way. Eight squared is 64, six squared is 36. If I added them the other way, I'd still get 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. 
What are the coordinates of the center of a circle? Well, if I draw a circle, this is a bad drawing, but bear with me. And the center of the circle is here. The endpoints of the diameter are going to be here, for example, and here. That means that this point is the midpoint. It's the center of a circle, which means it's the midpoint of the diameter. So these are the points. I use the midpoint formula to find 2.5 comma 4, and I'm done. On the next page, constructed response, it tells us that the uh, partitioning formula, I'm sorry, the partitioning ratio is 2 to 3. That means two parts are on one side and three parts are on the other side. If you'd like, you could use the grid, but it says the use of the grid is optional. So from R to this point here, that, is, that means I'm going up and over twice, using the slope twice. And then from this point to point W, that means I'm going up and over three times using that slope three times. So that's the two to three ratio. If you don't like that method, if you don't like the graphical method, you could use the partition formula, which is very simple. X1 plus A over A plus B, X2 minus X1, and then the same exact thing, except replace all your X's with Y's. If you do that, you'll be very wise. These are funny jokes. Question 11, in the, uh, what is the measure of the largest angle? That means you gotta find all the angles and pick the biggest one. The triangle sum theorem says that this angle, this angle, and this angle add up to 180, but I didn't know that it looked like this until I actually drew a triangle. If it says triangle and it doesn't give it to you, draw it. These are the three angles, one, two, and three. So we add them all together equal 180. We solve for x, x is equal to 44, but that's not the answer. It says the measure of the largest angle. So I substitute x into all of these and I get the largest angle being 82. Always draw a diagram. Next, number 12, using a compass and straight edge, construct a copy of angle PQR. We're gonna copy the exact angle. Remember that we are first um, using an arc, any old arc that we want. And then we're plotting a point and then making that same exact arc from that point. Then we're taking a uh, horizontal line and drawing that new horizontal line here. Then next we're taking a compass, putting the point here and the pencil here and making an arc. Then we put the point here and the pencil here. We make another arc wherever this arc and this arc intersect. That means we're going to draw our the, the other leg of the angle there easy peasy. Here are my steps. Please remember this. You also might need to know how to bisect an angle. Bisect means cut in half. You should remember that construction. And if you don't, go watch a video. Uh, page number four, question 13. It gives us that EBC is 30. BEC is a right angle, so BEC must be 90. Uh, find the measures of angles W, Y, and Z and justify all responses. Well, I know that angle W plus angle EBC, which is this angle, is equal to 180. Well, if this is 30, W's got to be 150 because they, they have to add up to a straight line. Those are supplementary. You could also say a linear pair. For question two, angle EBC, angle EBC, which is this angle here, plus angle E, which is that angle here, plus angle Y, which is this guy over here. We could call it angle BCE if we wanted to, equals 180. Why? Because it's a triangle, triangle sum theorem. We know that the triangle is here. So we add all three angles to get 180, and we solve that, and we get y is equal to 60. Uh, it's an easy equation to solve. Uh, last but not least, it says angle Z is equal to angle EBC plus angle E. Angle Z is here, which means it's another supplementary angle. You could use whatever angle Y was and say that, well, that's angle 60, uh, that angle 60 degrees rather, and then you can say that this is 120 because they add up to 180. Or you could use the exterior angle theorem, which says that angle EBC, which is this guy over here, plus angle E, well, I'm sorry, EBC is up here, plus angle E, which is over here, those are the two remote interior angles. They add up to this angle. That's called the exterior angle theorem. And we've done the exterior angle theorem before. We actually did it previously on this assignment. Question 14, write the equation of a line that is parallel. Well, parallel means same slope, so we're good to go with that. Whose equation is uh, well, like 3y, oh yeah, 3y equals x plus 6. That means what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for y. Why? Because I need to find the slope. Why am I not doing negative reciprocal? Because it says parallel, not perpendicular. If it said parallel, you do negative reciprocal. Uh, if it says parallel, you do the same slope. If it says perpendicular, you do negative reciprocal slopes. For step number two, we need to find the y-intercept, so we get y equals mx plus b out, our old tool y equals mx plus b. We substitute in 4 and negative 3 for y and x respectively, because this is the x value and this is the y value. Uh, once we substitute those in, we solve for b and we get b is equal to 5. Here's my equation, slope, y-intercept, bada bing, bada boom. 
Last question that was given to you here in the diagram, it's given a bunch of lines, but the question is which lines are parallel? Well, in order to figure out what, whether the lines are parallel, we need to figure out whether they have that, that special relationship. They, we need to figure out whether they have alternate interior angles, congruent angles, corresponding angles, whatever the case may be. I'm going to use the given angles to find all the rest of the angles. So for example, if this is 67, this is 113. If this is 76, this is 104. If this is 113, this is 67. And if this is 121, this is 59. The only reason I did that was because I need, uh, I, well, I'm able to do it. As supplementary means they add up to 180 and all of these are straight lines, which means this angle plus the angle, this angle have to uh, add up to 180. So once I did that, hey, check it out. Here's a 67 and here's a 67. Here's a 113 and here's a 113. It turns out that these angles are congruent to each other. And that's good because these angles are called corresponding angles. Corresponding meaning they're in the same exact location. They're same exact location here. It's on the top left. Here it's on the top left of two different intersections. N is not parallel to those lines. Why? Because this is 113 and this is not. R is not parallel. Why? Because R looks like it's a crazy random line. But also this angle is 59 and it's not 113. If you see angles that are the same, like for example, this angle and this angle are the same, that's a good clue to tell you that those lines are um, parallel. And it says that M and P have car congruent corresponding angles, it tells us that M and P are parallel. You can use the symbol for parallel, which is two vertical lines. You can say M is parallel to P. All right, that was the video on the interim assessment one review. Remember that your interim assessment is going to be first constructed response, uh, the, the short answer questions, and then the next day you're going to take the multiple choice. A couple of suggestions for the multiple choice before I go. For the multiple choice, you look through these questions uh, or sorry, you look through the answers and try to find the ones that make sense and find the ones that don't make sense. For example, in this question, the midpoint is negative two comma nine. I see that one of my endpoints is six and this midpoint has a value of nine as its Y value. I'm going from six to nine. The next value is probably not gonna be negative four because going from six to nine, I'm going up by three. The next value has to be even further up. So it's not going to be negative four, it's gonna be somewhere in that range. If you graphed this, you'd be able to do the same thing. And by the way, you have a piece of graph paper attached to the end of your test, so use it. If it helps you to spatially reason this out, use it. Uh, let's see, another example of a multiple choice um, strategy here is you're looking for uh, length. In this case, you're looking for length. It gives you this um, formula, I'm sorry, it gives you these two endpoints. If you graph these two points, you can easily see that the distance between them is not 100 because I wouldn't be able to graph it on uh, my graph if it was 100. It would be just too big. So you'd be able to easily eliminate that right away. The reason that that's there is because uh, some students tend to think that this is the answer, the square root of 100 is the answer, but it's not just 100. It is the square root of 100, which is 10. Uh, any other strategies that I can tell you? Please remember the... Uh, partition formula, my suggestion to you would be to memorize this formula because um, using the graph uh, is a sort of imprecise way to find this answer. And if you use the graph, you do have to write an explanation. You can't just draw the graph and that's it. Um, that is your answer. Uh, let's see. Anytime you're using a theorem, if you're using the triangle sum theorem, if you're using the exterior angle theorem, which is what we used here, anytime you use any of those theorems, please make sure that you're giving that reason. Don't just write x plus x plus 10 plus 2x minus 6 equals 180. Why are you doing that? Make sure you justify your answer because every question asks you to justify your answer. Answer all questions, show all work, and provide justifications. Super important. Uh, last minute tips and tricks. Please make sure when you're using your compass, you draw these arcs correctly. Uh, you're using your compass to do that. Don't fake the arcs. And also please make sure that when you're drawing your straight lines, they are straight, which means you're using a ruler. Uh, those are all the tips and tricks I have for you. Please study well. Please look over all your notes and good luck studying.